Hello my good friends, I'm going to take you for a design walkthrough of this, the New Racing T-Cell version 3. This is the work for our 2020 submission. And I'll take you for a little design justification through the circuit, just so you get familiar with it. This is the control board, it's now a single board. We have the HV connections from the tractive system and a 6-pin connector that supplies power and ground and has a connection each for red and green uh, T-cell lights. These are high side outputs, so if the lights share a common ground, that's fine. You don't need to use either of the negative connections. But I will take you through a walkthrough so we can just get familiar with this. So this is, this is it in all its glory. We have a, a little comparator circuit, we've got some isolation, and then we've got some MOSFETs driving our outputs. Let's just read it from left to right. What do we have? Let's start with the reference voltage. So we start with a reference voltage and the T-cell, it's meant to detect voltages above 60 volts. So this ref reference voltage is based off 12 volts to ground and we have this voltage divider. What have we got? 75K, 25K-ish, so like three quarters, one quarter. That's gonna be like three volts, a little less than three volts, just a shade less. So our reference is three volts, and that means that whenever this V in signal is higher than three volts, this output will go high, or it won't be pulled down. So what do we have for our input? We've got uh, one, two, three, we've got about a meg up here, and we've got about 50K down here. So for 60 volts, this will be like Three, a little more than three volts. So actually, at 60 volts input here, we have more than three volts. It's more like, it's probably close to the three and a half. And here we'll have three volts. So this will actually be just a little bit quick on the trigger. But you know what? That's fine with me. Uh, yep, so this uh, this will be good for up to 600 volts in, actually. The, uh, the voltage divider is made up of four resistors in the top leg and you know the bottom ones you only get a maximum 12 volts out here so you can basically assume you've got 600 volts across these top resistors and these um these are 1206 packages they're good for 200 volts a piece according to their data sheet so this is suitable all the way up to the maximum allowable by the FSAE got a little um Zena diode here that's just to protect the the op amp input to make sure that this never goes above 12 volts. If for some reason you get some transients or whatever, this will just clamp that input voltage off nicely. Maybe it would have been a good idea to have a, a 12, 12 volt Zener here as well, because you know you can get transients on your 12 volt lines, but I don't know, it seems like it's going to be fine. Uh, we've got an LM311, you could use an LM211 of course, it's the same part, just a little bit better. Uh, this this uh, two resistor capacitor combo here, that's just recommended by the data sheet to stop noise coupling from the output back to the input. It's probably not necessary in our situation. You know, these things are made to switch real fast and we only need to switch it extremely slowly. But what's going on? We've got the op amp and it's connected to a optocoupler. So in fact, when this is low, current will flow through the optocoupler LED and when this is high, no current will flow through the optocoupler LED. So what does that mean? When V in is 60 volts or higher, the non-inverting input is greater than the inverting input, so this will be high, which means no current flows. So if V in is high, this is off, which means that this signal over here is not V high. So what's going on over here? Well, we have uh, VCC coming in, going through our transistor, and then being pulled to ground through this 10K. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have an inversion of the input signal here, and that's driving the gate of this MOSFET, which is being pulled up to VCC. And this is, uh, this is where things get kind of neat, because actually now we've got this MOSFET controlling both 
the reset pin, the not reset pin, or the enable pin of the 555 timer, and the gate of another MOSFET. And what's going on here is, because this MOSFET is working as an inverter, that is, if the gate is high, this node gets pulled down to ground. And if the gate is low, this gets pulled up to high. So if this signal is not a high voltage, like if this signal is indicating not V high, then this signal indicates V high. And what happens then? If we do have a high voltage above 60 volts, then this enables the triple five timer and the triple five timer is in a stable mode. It just flashes and it's just driving this output circuitry, which results in a high side drive on a P channel MOSFET going off to the positive connection for our red lamp. So basically, if we have a high voltage at our input, then we get a flashing red light. If we have a high voltage at our input, that drives the gate of this P channel MOSFET high, which means that it's off. So our green light will be off. If we flip all that and we have a low voltage here, then this now gets pulled down to ground, which means our green light is on. And this gets pulled down to ground, which means our triple five timer is disabled. If you pull this, um, this pin four, this not reset low, it disables the output of the triple five timer. And I couldn't really figure out if it, if by disable, it means it sends the output low or it just disconnects the output. So I've put in this little inverter here, this little, uh, end channel MOSFET driver so that if this is either low or disabled, it doesn't matter. It'll just drive this output correctly. If we had the situation where it was pulled low instead of just being disconnected and we had this uh, p-channel gate connected straight through, then that would get pulled down and it would, it would just drive the, uh, the red light on continuously. So that would be no good. So I've just included that there to make things behave as they ought to. Now there's a few voltage systems here. So what do we have? We've got plus 12 volts, we've got VCC, and we've got GLV plus and GLV minus. So if I zoom out and take us down to the power supply, we have our main six pin connector. That's our power and T cell output connector. And the power connection comes straight in and goes to GLV plus. So anywhere on this circuit where you've got GLV plus, that is the raw GLV positive voltage from the car. Uh, that goes through a little rectified diode and becomes VCC. So I've done this to protect components if should something happen, should the, the polarity be reversed. So VCC is basically just polarity protected GLV. And we go through a span 0 to ATAC 12. That is a 12 to 12 volt converter. And all that's doing is giving us an isolated 12 volts. That's our plus 12V for the high voltage side of the circuit. So for the GLV ground, I'm using GLV minus. And for the high voltage ground, I'm using the ground symbol. So what that means is we have our circuitry, our um, control circuitry being powered through the diode, through polarity protection VCC. But then when we get to the power stage, the power stage is coming straight off the GLV. And that means that you're not bottlenecked by the current that can go through that diode. You can use the full GLV current. You can use this MOSFET to its full capacity, which I think is about five amps continuous, which is just, no, that's, that's crazy powerful. 60 watts, not necessary, but it means you don't have that bottleneck. We also have a little onboard V high LED, and that'll just flash red on board whenever the red light ought to be flashing as well, just for a little bit of user feedback. Hmm, I think that's just about everything I wanted to talk about. Yeah, so one last thing. This was, um, I designed the circuit with with this optocoupler in this configuration. And I've never tried that before. Here, the NPN transistor is a high side switch on the gate of this MOSFET. 
in most applications you see this as a low side switch but I didn't want that because that would create uh, an inversion of the signal and maybe maybe I could have used a low side switch and done away with this inverter here but there's there's a bit of a problem with that um, if we if we had the optocoupler feeding the triple five directly and we had it as a low side switch and did away with this inverter that'd be cool we would still get our full 12 volts when it goes high but this can't pull it all the way down to ground I think the V sat on these it's like it's like a uh, it's a full diode drop because of the the junction of that transistor and when I tried that before what I actually found was the saturation voltage of this transistor is actually high enough to create a bit of an unstable operation between this selector circuit. It's just high enough to allow this to turn on a little bit and run the green lamp, and it's just high enough to do something to the triple five timer and drive this output on constantly as well. So I had that problem in the in the V2 design and bodged that out. This time around though, I've I've done away with that and gone for this. Uh, previously, I haven't tested it, but I've I've read that it's um that it's possible, or completely acceptable, to use this as a high side switch. So if you don't have that in your circuit notebook, at the moment, hey, this is um that's a, a capable little circuit to add there. So anyway, I think I've rambled long enough about this. I hope uh, I hope that clears a few things up for you. Best of luck. Ah no, super important. Maybe not super important. I haven't actually tried it yet. Uh, but this this hysteresis resistor I think could be problematic I haven't actually commissioned this part because if you follow this current path you could have 12 volts going through the resistor through the optocoupler through the hysteresis resistor and then down to ground so there is a current path constantly through there albeit very very small um, and you know that just didn't give me the positive emotions so I didn't commission I didn't um, populate that part in the circuit and I mean like hysteresis on a t-cell voltage circuit it really it, it's kind of unnecessary like when it doesn't matter if there's a tiny bit of chatter just as you cross that threshold that's not gonna ruin anyone's day it's probably not even gonna be perceivable uh, but I figured that that current path just poses a little bit of risk and decided to just remove the possibility. Yeah, there you have it. Best of luck.